Hey mom and dad, friends, haters, and anybody else watching this video. Lately, I have been very into bookish themed videos. I am a book girly myself, and so I really do enjoy watching YouTube videos based around books. I like to know what other people are reading. I like to get book recommendations on YouTube. So I figured this would just be a fun little thing to start doing on my channel. So if there's any specific book content that you want to watch, let me know and I will produce them, maybe. This video is going to be what is currently on my fall TBR for anyone who is not a book girly. TBR stands for to be read, so it's all the books that I plan on reading during the fall time, but I haven't gotten around, well, haven't gotten around to it yet because it's not technically fall yet, but you know what I mean. I have over a hundred books on my TBR on Goodreads. So I have like my TBR on Goodreads. Those are all books that I don't have that I want to have. And then I have a at home TBR and those are books that I have, but just obviously have not read. I literally have like my own library full of books I haven't read yet. Um, yeah, so I really don't need any more books yet. I somehow always find myself at a bookstore purchasing more books. I don't feel like I'm wasting money when I buy books because one, it is something that I'm going to read and it's going to take me a minimum of one week to read. If I divide the total cost of the book, which is around like $15, and then you divide that by seven, it's really like $3 a day. And that's if I took a week to read, there are times where it takes me more than a week to read it. So like how much money do I really spend on it? You know, girl math. But also it feels like an investment because when I have a house, I want to have an actual library. So all of these books that I've been reading over the years can go into my library, plus the books that are on my virtual TBR and then the books that are on my like current physical at home TBR that I literally just have not read yet. So yeah, I just look at reading as like an investment and also a very fun healthy hobby but anyway we are going to get straight into what is on my fall tbr we are going to start off with the haunting i'm actually reading right now i'm almost done with it i'm at the very end i actually dare i say love it i obviously don't know what is going to happen yet i'm right at the end where like we find out what happens let me just read the back of it penny knows she must forget about her ex nash ever since his father was revealed as the brutal serial killer who traumatized their small town last halloween penny's parents have forbidden her to have anything to do with nash or his family it's hard not to think of him but she's trying that stops when she goes shopping with friends for a costume what she finds instead is ripped from a horror movie someone from school bleeding out on the floor of a dressing room stabbed People are quick to blame Nash and his sister Grace, but as Halloween nears and the body count rises, <laughs> the body count. Well, Penny can't help thinking this copycat killer is someone no one else suspects. I feel like I struggled reading that. It's because I'm under pressure. Um, I feel like people are watching me read and that really stresses me out. So far, this book is really good. If there is a book that has a specific timeline, like they literally show like timestamps and dates, I like to follow those timestamps in real life. That could just be a personal preference. I'm sure not everybody is as psycho as I am and likes to do that. If you are that way, I recommend reading this more in October because it is based around Halloween and the week of Halloween. So far, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I think it is so much fun. Even though it is September and this book is based in the last week of October, it is such a good way to get you into the spooky vibes because it's about Halloween and like crimes that are taking place in Halloween. But yeah, this is called The Haunting by Natasha Preston. I did not have my glasses on, which could have also been why I was struggling to read that. The next book I plan on reading is called The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I couldn't find like the plot in the back of the book. Not that I couldn't find it. It's literally not there. So I went on Goodreads and I will read off of Goodreads what the plot of the book is. Lo Blacklock, a journalist who writes for a travel magazine, has just been given the assignment of a lifetime. A week on a luxury cruise with a handful of cabins. The sky is clear, the water is calm, and the veneered, the veneered, select guests jovial select guests jovial as the exclusive cruise ship, the Aura begins her voyage in the picturesque North Sea. I sound like I am reading for the first time and I am sorry. I, re I, you know what? So obviously it wasn't the glasses. I just can't read. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's reading out loud that I can't do because when I read in my head, like I, I am a going, but reading out loud, clutching my pearls. I am thoroughly surprised by what is happening right here. But let me try that. Honestly, this sentence is confusing to me, but we're gonna try again. 
The sky is clear, the water is calm, and the veneered select guest jovial as the exclusive cruise ship, the Aura, begins her voyage in the picturesque North Sea. That was a tongue twister. Anyway, at first, low stay is nothing but pleasant. The cabins are plush, the dinner parties are sparkling, and the guests are elegant. But as the week wears on, frigid winds whip the deck, gray skies fall, and low witnesses what she can only describe as a dark, terrifying nightmare, a woman being thrown overboard. The problem? All passengers remain accounted for, and so the ship sails on as if nothing has happened, despite Lowe's desperate attempts to convey that something, or someone, has gone terribly, terribly wrong. The reason why I'm choosing to read this book next is because, like I was just saying, this is based on a specific timeline, and the first chapter starts on September 18th, which is literally today. <laughs> I would love to start this book today, so I will make it my mission to finish The Haunting tonight so that I can start this book tonight as well, so that I'm on the same timeline. But yeah, that sounds Spooky. Ooh, look at the like parting chapters. Look at how cute. Look at how cute. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I forget where I found this book, but fall too well. You can't tell me this was not a targeted post. It was a targeted post. It was a targeted post. Fall too well, are you kidding me? If anybody out there is a Swifty, you know good and well, fall, that is when you listen to Red on repeat. The whole Red album, but specifically, all Too Well, the 10 minute version, Taylor's version. Like when I listen to All Too Well, it does not matter what time of year it is, it is fall. It could be peak heat over the summer, mid July. It is now fall the second I hear. Please, the second I hear All Too Well. Obviously this was not an accident because even the illustration, like the girl literally looks like Taylor Swift. And some may argue that the man looks like Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't think he looks just like him, but that is definitely Taylor Swift. This one is gonna be a little bit different than the other books that I'm reading because the other ones are more like crime based. This one I think is more of like a romance book. I should have married my childhood. You know what, I feel like if I add character while I'm reading that I won't struggle to read. Like I keep stuttering and I think it's because I'm focusing too much on reading the words that are on the page and knowing that like people are watching me read and that freaks me out. But maybe if I give it some light, I won't struggle so much to read. So we're gonna try that out. I should have married my childhood best friend, but I chose another man. I'm a single mom back in my hometown trying to make ends meet and my ex bestie is my new boss. Clearly this is not about Taylor Swift. The moment our eyes meet, I know I'm the last woman on earth Nash McCready wants to see. Now we're forced to work together and face old memories I've avoided for years. Everywhere I look, he's there, and it doesn't help that he's the only man I've ever left. I ignore him and the bubbling feeling for as long as I can, but fail. Lines are crossed, and we work on rebuilding our relationship and broken hearts. But I think we might actually have a chance at forever. My ex wreaks havoc on my life, sabotaging whatever he can. But Nash is there for me, saving me. Something he does fall too well. I, obviously, this book is going to be extremely cheesy. Like, I'm really not expecting it to be the best book that I have ever read in my entire life, you know? The best romance. I'm really just here for the vibes, and it is obviously fall-based. I would imagine that the scene is going to be set very well. So I'm very excited to read this book. Again, I think I found it on, like, Instagram or something. Oh, the little leaves are, like, hearts. Check it out. Very cute. Back to murder. Next on my list is called Hate List. I also just wanna say, some of these books I have literally had for like a year now and have not read them. Not because I'm not reading, but because I just haven't read these specific books. Like I have so many books. When I tell you I have so many books, I am not lying. I have a library full of books, a plethora of books that I have yet to read. Sorry, I think some of these books might've been mentioned in a video I made like years ago about books I wanted to read in the fall. Never got to them because I kept buying books instead of reading the ones I had. But anyway, this is called The Hate List by Jennifer Brown. Cute. I love the cover. Oh, it like matches my vibe. Also, sorry. I just want to go back to Fall Too Well for a second. The guy in this book, his name is Nash. The book I'm currently reading, The Haunting, his name is Nash. And the book I read before that, The Things We Hide in the Light, The Things We Hide in the Dark. The Things We Hide from the Light, his name was also Nash. What is up with that? Why is everyone's name Nash? I don't know. The list was my idea. I didn't mean for anyone to die. Will you ever forgive me? Five months ago, Valerie Lefman's boyfriend, Nick, opened fire on their school cafeteria. Val was as shocked as everyone else, but despite her own serious injury, she's implicated in the crime because of the list. The list she and Nick made of people they hated. The list Nick used to pick his targets. Now, after a summer of seclusion, Val is forced to confront her guilt as she returns to school to complete her senior year. Haunted by the memory of the boyfriend she still loves and navigating rocky relationships with her family, her former friends, and the girl whose life she saved, 
Val must come to grips with the tragedy that took place and her role in it in order to make amends and move on with her life. That is sad. Obviously, it's a very dark book and like about a sensitive topic. So maybe don't read this book if it's something that will trigger you. I feel like all these books should have the same warning. Next, we have Just Like Mother by Anne Help. Heltzel? I don't know how to say her name. I have also had this book for a long time. This was in the horror section, which I don't think I actually have anything that is from the horror section. I think everything I have is from like mystery, thriller, YA genre. So I am excited to read like a actual horror novel. The last time Maeve saw her cousin was the night she escaped the cult in which they were raised. For the past two decades, Maeve has worked hard to build a normal life in New York City where she keeps everything and everyone at a safe distance. New York City, okay. When Andrea suddenly reappears, Maeve regains the only true friend she's ever had. Soon she's spending more time at Andrea's remote Catskills estate than in her own cramped apartment. Maeve doesn't even mind that her cousin's wealthy work friends clearly disapprove of her single lifestyle. After all, Andrea has made her fortune in the fertility industry. Baby fever comes with the territory. Okay, this is a long sentence, hold on. The more Maeve immerses herself in Andrea's world, the more disconnected she feels from her life back in the city and the cousin's increasing attachment triggers memories Maeve has fought hard to bury. But confronting the terrors of her childhood may be the only way for Maeve to transcend the nightmare still to come. I don't really know what that means. Um, and then the last book I have on my TBR is called Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. When I was reading through the reviews on this book, the main reason why some people were giving it low ratings is because apparently it is very gory and like a very dark book targeting women specifically. Obviously it's called Pretty Girls. We could assume that the victims are women. I have not read this book obviously, so I can't say if it is super gory or gruesome i would say to do your own research before purchasing this book gore does not bother me even when it's like in a movie or a show so i really think reading about it is probably gonna be fine but we'll see sisters strangers survivors it's been more than 20 years since claire and lydia last spoke claire is the glamorous trophy wife of an attack I was gonna say of an Italian millionaire. It says Atlanta, Atlanta. And I was gonna say Italian. We're gonna start from the top. Sisters, strangers, survivors. It's been more than 20 years since Claire and Lydia last spoke. Claire is the glamorous, glamorous. <laughs> Claire is the glamorous trophy wife of an Atlanta millionaire. Lydia is a single mother dating an ex-con, struggles to make ends meet but neither has recovered from the disappearance of their sister, Julia, two decades earlier. And the shocking murder of Claire's husband brings the horror and heartbreak of the past roaring back into their lives. The vanishing of a teenage girl and the killing of a middle-aged man, almost a quarter century apart. What could connect them? As they form a wary truce, the surviving sisters unearth the secrets that destroyed their family all those years ago. And find the astonishing truth where they least expected it. Also hoping for the best there. But yeah, those are the six books that I plan on reading this fall. Obviously I could end up reading more, but I just didn't want to share a whole bunch of books and then end up not reading them. Those are the ones we're gonna stick with. If you're into like spooky, horror, thriller, those types of books, definitely give me a follow. Give me a follow on Goodreads. I try to read some romance over the summertime because I just feel like, you know, sometimes I like to go to Central Park and read. Reading about like murder while I'm in Central Park sometimes isn't always the vibe, you know? I try to lighten it up a little bit with like a romance of some sorts over the summer. However, thriller and horror and mystery is really where I thrive. That is my bread and butter. Even during the Christmas time, I like to read like Christmas murder mysteries. That's my shit right there. I feel like I'm saying too much. I feel like I'm saying a lot and nothing at all at the same time. I also wanted to tell you guys like overall what these books were rated on Goodreads. I probably should have done this like as I was going through them, but I did not. The Haunting was rated 3.65. I personally think it's a really good book so far. I obviously don't know how it's gonna end, so I can't say if I agree or disagree with that rating. The Woman in Cabin 10 was rated a 3.73, pretty good. Fall Too Well was rated 4.04. .04. That is a great rating. Didn't think it was gonna be that high. The Hateless was rated four stars. Just Like Mother was rated 3.7. And Pretty Girls was rated 4.04 .04 stars. So all these books were rated pretty high, so I'm excited to read through them. Hopefully I agree with the rating. I plan on making a lot more fall content and also some more bookish content, so stay tuned if you enjoy those things. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the damn things, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye! Yo, tell me, have you seen her? Let me wrap my weave up. I'm the trap Selena. Damn it, my gasolina.